Good afternoon, people. I'll just be with you in a minute. Oh, wrong button. Uh, go on, get the weighty one. Get the weighty one. Right. There we are. Hello, peeps. How are you doing? Good afternoon, everybody, on this yet again wonderful Friday afternoon. Nice and sunny outside. Um, I've been breaking me back again this morning with messing about with sandstone. And I thought, oh, just for a change, I'll pop down the shop and stand in a queue for a while. Uh, just, to, just to get some rays. So, what we're doing today. Right, what we're doing today. First off, I've got um, young Dale in the background. So, I will just pop him in. There he is. Uh, Dale's going to be doing the chat for me today. And he'll be reading out um, everybody that's here. Uh, so, good afternoon, Dale. And thank you very much for doing that. Pleasure as always, uh, sir. Pleasure as always. I'll put you back in the background again. I'll see a few things Wait. and then you can start reading out who's here. Uh, so what I'm doing, I'm going to be doing a vase shape, uh, which is going to be uh, painted black with ebonizing lacquer. And then I'm going to be doing some string pull, uh, doing some feathers with the, the Joe Sonia iridescent paints. Um, some of you may well have seen me do this technique before. If you watched any of my videos, uh, you might not have, uh, obviously, if you haven't. Um, so hopefully I'll get this done in around about an hour. If I don't get the inside of the vase cleaned out uh, properly, I'm not overly concerned about that because it's really all about the, um, about the painting, if you like, just to show another technique of uh, painting that I use. So I'll just change camera. And then Deal can start. I'll start reading out stuff. Who's in? See if I can. So we have up. got we have got um, YV Woodshed. We have John PBH. We have Fingers. Um, we have Neck. Flaming Turner. I saw Stays somewhere out there. This was uh, Real Ale. Real Ale ninety nine and nine nine nine. Um, who else do we have? Um, we have Wayne Fennel. Oh, heck, we're not going to have about three or four Waynes in here. No, I think the other Wayne will be at work. You reckon? Yeah. Okay, so we've got two Waynes. We've got Wayne F and Wayne the Wood Turner. There's also a ting th uh, Things and Tings, I think I saw. And yeah, Tings Turnings is also a Tings there was somebody else as well. What was his name? I mentioned him earlier on. Hadn't seen him before. Wavy Woodshed. Um, yeah. I'll keep looking. It's. It, I think it's up towards the beginning. Um, working it through. All right, sir, you get going. I'll find the name. Right. Uh, turn and start. Key products. Get, uh, yeah, that was the one. Turn and at a roundabout. 1150 revs there. I'm just going to use my spindle rough and gouge and get this down into round. Mike Jew says, hi everyone. Technically I'm at work um, from home, so this is research. Yeah, yeah, we'll go with that. Just had a notification there. Joy English is in the chat. Just shared this out. Good afternoon, Joy. Oh, good morning, Joy. Enjoying your morning coffee? Just there. I've still got a bit of a flat on. Yeah. Right. 
I'm just going to put, let's have a look and see if I want to gauge which way around this wants to be. I don't think it's going to make that much difference to tell you the truth. So I'll just flatten off this end. And again, when you're using the, the parting tool, I do say this quite a lot to people, don't go straight in like a scraper when you're using the parting tool put the bevel of the tool actually on the wood then start bringing the handle up until it starts cutting so you actually uh, start so on. Sorry, no, no, mate, sure good. and then you yeah, just a good on morning Finishing right on the center line, like that. Sorry, I missed what you said there, Dale. Uh, I was just going to be it's a case of uh, some folks are saying no coffee today. Wayne says joy. Oh. Um, Flaming Tenna says he's about to start and finish a piece I was playing on yesterday. Oh, um, nice. Is that the one with the um, the different types of paints, Nick? John PBH says, um, I learnt that from you, Wayne, consider considerably improved my use of the parting tool. Oh, good. Thanks, John. Um, Joy says, Butch, morning. Now, normally when people put... That's it, then I'm going to get this turned around now and get the chuck on. Normally when people do a tenon, they will put a dovetail on the tenon uh, because a lot of the chuck setups, the internal setup on the chuck is a dovetail. But on the particular jaws that I use, and I've said this I don't know how many times in the past, on the particular jaws that I use, they don't have a do dovetail. See if I can get this in order. They've actually got, don't know if you can see it there, they've got a lip, and then inside that it's actually parallel. That's because this particular set of jaws, one of the other things it does, these are Axminster jaws for the Axminster chuck. And one of the other things it does is hold the um the screw chuck. We'll just get that opened up a bit. Before I tighten it up, make sure it's centered it okay. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Make sure it's tightened well down on all the chucking points. I'll leave the tail center in for the moment just till I get some shape in there. That's running fine. So I'll be using a mixture of my spindle rough and gouge and spindle gouge to get this shaped. Angus says, well done to Woody on winning the prize, Nick. That was Nick's 300 sub giveaway. 300 subs. Well done, Nick. Yeah, well done, Nick. I'm using my half inch spindle gouge. 
with the with the fingernail grind on it. I'll just get some shape into this. Uh, fingers is asking how my finger is today. Uh, it's pretty good, mate. It's just a glass cup. So it's healing up reasonably well. There doesn't seem to be any infection or anything to be worried about. Free living's in. Afternoon, free living. says what's so shocking Nick I enjoy watch you work um, Doug says answering comments I've got you alive today Doug how are you I watched your video this morning thanks for the shout out mate much appreciated Right, now what I am going to do with this, this is something that I tend to forget to do. Um, I'm going to put a small part and cut just at the base here. <coughs> and the reason I'm doing that is that you see these little bits here that have just flecked up? It means I can actually get them cleaned up before I do the sanding and before I do the colouring so when I come to part it off the initial part and cut has already been made forward thinking there's a new one for me just put a couple of these tools away get this drilled out I'll leave the sand in I think until I've done the the inside take the center out put my chuck in sorry yeah Jacob's chuck I'm putting in using a 
sawtooth bit. I'll just have a check at how far I want to go down. About that far. Yeah, that should be enough. Bring the speed down to around about 500 for doing the drilling. Don't want things to bind up. Now, another one of the reasons I use this drill, I forget what size this drill is now, but one of the reasons I use this particular drill is... If I want to reverse the vase into a chuck to finish off the bottom, this particular size fits straight into one of my other, or straight onto one of my other sets of doors. And this took me to start with. Sorry, this is going. Brian, yeah. here we have. Do we have a to drink? Do we have to drink for the word colour today? If so, I'm starting really early. It's 8.15. <laughs> uh, no, I don't think we'll bother with that one. This, uh, today, Joyce. No, not today. No, Joyce says you're being silly like if people didn't didn't like you or your show, they would never subscribe to stop being a downer and just accept that space, that space isn't the only one to see the teddy bear inside. Uh, Dim says, not the biggest items, squeezy bottles for sanding sealer, etc. and bike chain. Degreaser, uh, Joy goes on to, oops, didn't like you. Um, and the Flaming Tunnel says, I'm calling them my petty subs. Okay. I think you're doing yourself a disservice there, Nick. I really do. I'm with joy on this one. I'm not happy with that drill bit, so I'm going to go for a, a different one. That one's a bit, um, a bit on the blunt side, shall we say. And I'm not going to bother sharpening it now. Right. This one will take us about three quarters of the way down. That's what she said. Yeah, that's what she said. Um, uh, Doug says you have pity subs. Um, real simple things. Bazaman, afternoon, guys. Um, I have a new hater on mine, it seems. All right. Um, um, Doug McCarran, wood burning, wood turning in crafts. Nick always say... Say don't you know Nick? Always say don't pay yourself down, pal. We'll all we'll all agree with that, Nick. Doing really well, mate. Joy, you, Doug? No. Jay says you, Doug? No. Um, Brandon Freer, I just tell him thank you. Um. Sure, who Brandon for you is? Is it one of those made up ones? I'm not too sure. I always have a look at how long their account's been around to see if it's a real person. And very often, the account's just been created for the purpose of winding people up. Uh -huh. I've got that hole drilled. We'll try this other drill again. Just to see if I can widen it a bit. Right. 
Barry says he's high fingers. He's just got his student food sorted out for lunch. Now, one of the reasons that I've left the the standing and the covering until after I've done the, the drilling. I don't know if you can notice, you might be able to notice a bit of discoloration here. Even though this wood is very dry, with the heat of the drill producing some friction in there, it is bringing a wee bit of dampness out. So I like to get that out of the way first before I get the outside sanded and coloured. Should have changed the, um, the the belt ratio on this onto the the lower ratio would have given me a bit more torque. Nick says, "I know it seems sad, but I put myself down so others don't have to, and plus I put myself down so I can prove myself wrong." Bob says he started off stirring crap. We crafted clear and I, we talked and straightened it out, and now he just puts bad comments on my video. Um, Joy says, personally, I'm of the opinion that the reason some people like to try and tear other people down is just because they are jealous that they are themselves do not have any talent of their own. Well, there is that. There is that. But I just find it good for a laugh, to tell you the truth. Oh, so some of them are hilarious. I mean, there was one Jake who got the other day was absolutely priceless. Yeah. Um, um, when, you've, when you've spent time in an institution like the army, where basically you get put down all the time, uh, every day, and that's just by your mates. <laughs> <laughs> that's by the people who are supposed to like you. <laughs> you give a damn. And I said damn there because we're, we are at lunchtime. Yes. That is it, Barry says. Haters gonna hate. Never to a word. David says, Fingers says, um, some people just have nothing better to do, nothing better to be doing. I think they are trying to trying to make themselves happy at the end of it all. They're still left in sad individuals. Very cool. Barry's echoing the sentiment of the group, which is, yeah, you're doing really well, Nick. Stop putting yourself down. Shut up. Not what he said, but that's what he meant. Yeah, join, join in. Please come and make sure that you're well. Yep. Yeah. yeah, shut up, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> Right, I think that will do for the drilling out. We're down to about here on the drilling out. What else have we got? Dear. Another thing to be careful of as well if you're doing anything like this. Oh, 
is don't touch the drill once you've been drilling. Tends to burn a little bit. Right, we're going to have to move one of these cameras out of the way for the moment. Otherwise, I'll just get in the way of me hollowing tool. Right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to shape the rim of this a little bit. Not very much. Speed up. Martin, out with his creations is in. Um, let's have a look at and get a better camera angle for when I'm following. I think that one will do. So I'm going to be using my Simon Hope uh, carbide tip hollower. Probably for doing the majority of this. Just move the tool rest up a little bit. Again, this is a practice piece. I'm not looking to get this exceptionally thin on the inside. Like I say, I want to concentrate more on. Aspect. Wayne of the Big Feet is on. Oh, good afternoon, Wayne. I should have 20 pence on that. I was just seeing you were at work. And good afternoon, Valerie. I can always leave this connected to the chuck so I can finish it after or leave the, the tenon on the bottom I should say so I can um, finish it afterwards just like you see well, that's half past one now when I'm really wanting to concentrate on doing the, the paint and so what I'll do I'll get this sanded Starting off with 120. Thank you. 
240. and 400 do I'll put the, the overhead camera back on just so you can see what's going on oh that's not it so <clears throat> uh, Wayne of the Big Feet is saying for the stable future he doesn't work Fridays all right. Um, okay. Cassidy says, "Could uh, could of my oh, sorry, I missed that there." Yes, David. Uh, yes, David, that's good. Says Wayne. Said David fingers. Wayne says, "Yes, David. Long weekends, but nowhere to go." Um, James Cassidy says, uh, "Club. Some of I think it's some of my club mates could have recently purchased the Simon Hope Hollowing tool. A bit expensive." Oh yeah, the um, the one with the the um, articulated arm. Yes, that is very expensive. I've still got it, like, but it's yes. <laughs> On something this sort of size, it's hardly worth um. The messing about getting it set up, to tell you the truth. We're using, sorry, getting around, telling the old sand and sealer again. I'll put my palette up. some kitchen roll just to take off the excess and help it dry a little bit a couple yeah he meant a couple of his mates at the club rather than could Joy says my typing is always poo Oh, and Joy, I'm underage here. Because <laughs> what she did is she put the symbol for a poo. I was about to ask if G I was about to ask James if the um, if they're getting the one with the camera rather than the one with the infrared. He is, he is talking about the one with the camera, the TV camera, and lots of equipment. Which is quite a beastie of a piece of kit. It is. I mean, it works well with the laser, but um, to tell you the truth, I've been thinking about just trying to set up one of these web cameras I've got onto the arm. That might work. Camera. The, uh, I'll still be able to put it up on the TV. Yeah. The uh, the um, as he says, hunting for the woods. 
the endoscope I've got on my scroll saw would be perfect for that. I wonder if I could use the one I bought from Middles. You know the one I mean. You know what I mean. That would let you get it on the tool. You could tap it tight to the tool, yeah. so the cable wasn't in the way. Right then. Um, now I'm using chestnut ebonizing lacquer. Um, I did some have somebody in the comments on the uh, galaxies and planets ball if they could use black gloss paint. Yes, you can use black gloss paint. Um, I tend, if I'm using black gloss paint, I just tend to buy it from um, Halfords, which over here in the UK is an auto supply place. Now, the reason is that I the put, acrylic stuff, or is it the? Um, I can't remember. Because the acrylic satin black, that Simon's do is is really close to the. To the Halford stuff because I've used both. Um, I think me buying the Halford stuff was more luck than good judgment at one point in the past, um, um, and that's really good. But the, there's, it, it's I think it's acrylic, satin black acrylic. You, you've got to dig around in it, fast drying and all that good stuff. As Simon's do it too. Um, I think they're more international. I don't know. But either way, looks splendid. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. Nope. Well, you can't Any yes. Now, the reason that I put on sand and sealer is because usually if you were going to put the likes of an ebonizing lacquer or a paint or anything on, you would probably put an undercoat on, especially on wood. It's always best if you're using any type of paint on wood to put an undercoat on before you put the top coat on. So the sand and sealer actually acts as an undercoat for the top coat um, to stick to. Let me just get my hot air gun. Mario Tata's carvings is in. Is Mario Tata's oh, that's carvings. Good. That's Mario. Uh, Mike, you've got the queue to get on all of the different websites at the moment. I had to wait about uh, 20 minutes to get on the Wix the other week. If you're going to use a hot air gun, as I am, if you're going to use a hot air gun, as I am, um, don't have it on high, just have it on the low one if it is adjustable. And don't try to dry too fast. If you dry any of these things too fast, any of the, the spray-on gloss paints, ebonizing lacquers, anything like this, if you dry them too fast, they're going to bubble and you're going to have to start again. Particularly if you're not 100 percent sure your undercoat's dried. Yeah. Really ill is asking late painting time again. Yes, really ill. Late painting time again. Touch it. And then Joker says if you switch windows it sends you back to the queue too. I give up. What I'm going to use to do the feathers is just some wool. So what I'm going to do now, I'll put, I'll do this down on here so you can maybe see what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be getting a, a mixture of colours here so I can do different coloured. Um, feathers. Now, if you are going to use Joe Sonia's iridescence, 
you've got to be very careful when you use them because they all come out a creamy colour. So you've either got to label the pot you're putting it in or actually put the coloured jar behind it so you know which one you're using. And as you can see, it is quite thick when it comes out. So that's the violet and the red I've got there. I'm going to be using the green as well. Um, maybe the blue. Trying to squeeze this in when it's a new bottle and still got the protective thing on. Sensible being sensible. Bit of the blue. And gold. Now, as PBH can... says, okay, time to raid the wife's crochet bag. <laughs> as you can see, I don't know if you can see that, the paints do come out quite thick and creamy. So what I'm going to use to thin them down is floor improver, acrylic floor improver. Now, what floor improver does, now, since how this is... <coughs> You could actually use water to thin it down, but using flow improver, what this does, it allows you to thin the paint down, but you don't actually lose any strength of the colour. Oh, put far too much in there. I must reduce the viscosity of the paint. It reduces the viscosity. I'm forgetting what they call it now. It's called something, though. I've, I've tried to look this up in the past, and I've usually found the the wrong thing. It's called something like wet water. Okay. So it doesn't have the same sort of water tension. Uh, sorry, surface tension. Surface tension. Well. Yeah. It gets all very technical, and I'm not really into doing technical stuff. Said a man with laser guided hollows. <laughs> I know, but you know what? <laughs> Just give them a good mix up. This is a very simple but very effective technique, this is. Oh, no, I've done it already. I've started putting things down. I don't know which bloody ones I've put them down in front of. Right, it's going to be a surprise colour. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you can see very well, but you just can't tell the difference. You know, when you hold them, you can't tell the difference what colour they are, which is why when you're using your on your paints, what you've got to do is actually use them on a black or very dark background. So, what I'm going to do is just get some paint and lay it down here. This is all out of the same palette or receptacle, I should say. Looks 
become running out of weight. Booger. Right, we've got a few on there. Now I'm just going to take a length of the wool. And all I'm going to do is lay the wool down into the paint. Right, that. I'll just use one of the, the sticks just to make sure that all of the wool gets covered in the paint. Then what you do is you take your wool like that and I'm going to lay it from the top down towards the bottom. So you just lay it on like that. Oh, my hand's in the way. So I've just laid it on like that and then all I'm going to do is take it to one side. Let's get some of this loose wool. Nope. Oh. Take it to one side and just pull it back it's back on itself. Just like that. I'm going to lay it in again. Lay it back down the middle again. Oh, Glenn Senior's in. No grit. I'm off that, and you're sacked Glenn? again. <laughs> You pull it round the other way like that and then you take it from the top and just pull it down towards the bottom just to get the middle of the feather SK Crafts is in the chat afternoon Steve afternoon Glenn sorry I'm not using grit yes I know I've got it back again he says you're sacked. Again. Good. How often do you remain employed? I mean... <laughs> so, what do you think? I am getting some cells there. Now, the reason I'm getting some cells there is probably because I've thinned this down a bit too much. I'll just turn that round to around about there and we'll just do another one And then take that one down as well. James Cassidy says, Wayne, I mix the paint with medium flow and keep them in a bottle with the name of the colour on it. It helps yeah, if that's... there is a surplus, you can keep it and use it again for the next project. Yeah, that sounds like a good plan. But I've definitely thinned these down just a little bit too much. But again, it's more of a practice piece just to show you the technique.
There it is. I don't actually mind those cells that much. So there's the the feather bowl. Um, we'll get rid of some of these pots. Um, and I'll just give these a wash out. Since how to the acrylic paint, just give these a wash out so I can reuse them. I think what I could have done as well, I could actually knock back the ebonizing lacquer with one of the web racks pads and that might have helped with mm -hmm. being to stick to it. Mick D. Jew says that's brilliant. Definitely trying that this weekend. Young Jay says, very nice, Wayne. Tis very nice, Wayne. I imagine somehow that's sounding like it's from Dorset or down in uh, that part of the world. But anyway, I don't know why. Uh, Matthew Gallagher, Wootenning's in the chat. Good afternoon, Matthew. Uh, Stephen from SK Craft says, Wayne, could you do that style with any paint? You could probably do it with any sort of iridescent paint. If you do it with ordinary acrylics, now, okay, let me quantify that. I've watched people do this on YouTube painting channels, and they have only used ordinary acrylic paints. But what they tend to do is they will do it like on a, um, a wet background. They will put a base color down, which they actually keep wet, like, like any sort of string pull that's done in painting, if you like. A lot of people tend to do it on wet backgrounds. Uh, you can't really do that on the likes of a vase because uh, it doesn't work. Um, so all my string pulls I tend to do on dry backgrounds rather than wet backgrounds. Yes, in answer to your question, Steve, you can do it with ordinary acrylics, but I think it's something you're probably going to have to practice. Tell, I, I quite like the cells. Okay, it's, it's my cock up that the cells have um, got there because I loosened off the paint too much and I probably should have knocked back the the um, ebonizing lacquer as well so the paint would stick better. But I quite like that effect, to tell you the truth. Depends how they form. I quite like it. And like I see, all these ones that I do on the lives, they are all practice pieces. Uh, this piece, it's still got enough thickness in the in the walls, so I can actually take all this paint off and redo it again. Just a little bit tacky at the moment, but that's it, guys. Uh, what I'll do, I'll change camera. Um, just give us a second till I take this chuck. Chuck out. I'm just going to leave it in the chuck for the moment. How much chuck could a wood chuck chuck if a wood chuck could chuck wood? So, again, it was uh, just to give you another idea of a different type of technique you can do. So, there we go. That's the Joe Sonia iridescence on chestnut ebonizing lacquer. String pull effect done as a feather. So, hope you enjoyed it, guys. Um, 
I had to think up something fairly quickly when I was on Scott's Live last night to see what I was going to do today because I didn't expect to be in here today. Um, or oh, not certainly not live anyway. So that's the, the live over. I do tend to keep these ones to around about an hour. Um, I have got um, Dale in the background. I'll just bring him in. Hello. And the reason that uh, so, certainly when Dale's in, if I'm keeping it to an hour, Dale is working from home at the moment, but he tends to have his lunch break. A scamper. Half past 12 yeah. and 2 o'clock, so, and then he's usually got to get back in, be the attender, organise me. Lunch today day. is beer, though. Sorry. Beer it is Friday. We'll let them Friday. It's Friday. It's Friday. It's been a long week. Nice to see everybody in. Nice to see a couple of new people in. Thank you very much for coming in. Uh, a big uh, thanks to, to Doug, if he's still there. Thanks for the shout out, Doug. Uh, much appreciated. I have already gained uh, a few nubs, a few new subscribers uh, because of the shout out. So thank you for that. Uh, and I've got to see the ball turned out absolutely brilliant as well. By the way, um, I will be back on Monday lunchtime doing another live. Uh, that'll be happening as long as this uh, lockdown carries on. Um, Stace is on tonight. Oh, um, Nick is up doing a premiere at half past seven tonight. And he's doing, I think he's premiering the NHS ball that he did. I'm sure that's what he's premiering tonight. Uh, Stace is going to be on at eight o'clock. Um, Zach's at 11, I think. Zach's, Zach is on fairly regularly. He was on. He's, on, he's on all over the place right now, so I can't be sure. So, Zach Higgins, if you like your resin stuff, he'll be on um, 11 p.m. UK time. I'm not too sure what that translates to um, over where he is. Doug, Doug, help us here. When's Zach on? But yeah, go on. Well, he's, <laughs> well, he's coming back. 11. Yeah. Okay. Um, tomorrow. Ed Oliver has finally got his internet sorted, so he's going to be on at 10 o'clock in the I morning. I don't believe evening. it. Yes, he has. He did a quick live last night that I watched. Um, I don't know who's on tomorrow lunchtime. Is Nick Not on sure. Tomorrow? Oh, wait, no. Um, da, da, da. I think it's Nick. Nick, Nick, you're live tomorrow lunchtime? Is that right? Yeah, he's put a thumbs up there. Yeah. Um, Nick is also live tomorrow night. So we've got two doses of Nick tomorrow. Um, Emma, the Tiny Turner, is also live tomorrow night as well. Sunday, we will be having Dale in, I believe. Yeah, so go, we'll have a, we'll have an edit premiere about one-ish, and then we'll have the main event about two-ish. Grand. So we've got a, a, two doses of Dale on Sunday. Chris Fisher, the Blindwood Turner, he'll be on around about half past seven, Chris comes on. Um, for a, a wee while, um, then we have Makers International podcast at half past nine UK time. JP Jamie Page, he'll have a premiere at eleven. Um, Immediately, so about half an hour after the the lads yeah. show up. And um, Caitlin the cat, uh, she'll have a premiere. Her premiere usually, I can't. Remember, I think she did it at half past eleven last week. It'll either be half yeah. past eleven. Or 12 o'clock. Um, More or less o'clock. straight after Mr. Page. Yeah. And then we're back to Monday. I'm live Monday lunchtime. Andy Hill, AHB Spoke, will be doing his usual carving at a round of. Oh, sorry. Chris Fisher. Fish Fish yeah. yeah. They will be doing their, their wee podcast thing at home with the Fishers at half past seven on Monday night. And then Andy, AHB Spoke, will be doing some carving. At around about 9.15, that's what time he usually starts on Monday night. Uh, cool. So, plenty of stuff to, out there to watch. Um, don't bother with the t TV because, uh, as usual, it's uh, pretty, yeah, I'll not swear. Um, watch, watch the tubes, come and watch us, have a good laugh, and uh, I'll see you soon, guys. Enjoy the rest of the day. Cheers now. Cool. Cheers, everyone.